Welcome to CCD and the second episode in our series, Why Science Matters. Now today I've got with me Professor Hans Gerspar from ETH Zurich and I'm going to be speaking to him about why science matters when it comes to governance. Welcome Hans. Great to talk to you today. Hans, I'm going to jump straight into the first question and that is why does science matter, uh, especially with proof of stake blockchains and beyond all of what is uh, tackled by computer science? Well, there are many areas such as staking, tokenomics, decentralized finance, or governments in which various scientific disciplines are essential to solve the problems. Economics and finance in general, or game theory and social choice theory, for instance, uh, are important to solve problems in these areas. Okay, so when we speak about staking, what scientific methods have to be used? With staking, we allow token holders to delegate their token for some predetermined time to a pool owner. So that the pool owner can engage in validation of transactions with a larger share of tokens. This should make validation of transactions more attractive for pool owners, but also it delivers additional returns to delegators of tokens. Now there are some tough questions science has to answer. For instance, does staking inc increase blockchain security? And does it distribute the returns from validation more evenly among token holders? Should we allow pool owners to freely distribute the returns from transaction validation to delegators and themselves? And who benefits from staking the short and long term? To answer these questions, we need game theory and the model how staking works. Our first model and results have suggested the design of staking has, should be done with great care. For instance, unconstrained competition of pool owners for delegators can endanger blockchain security. And we need to design appropriate frameworks for such competition of pool owners for delegators. So with that in mind, why do we need science for governance? Well, governance of proof of blo uh, state blockchains has to establish collective decision rules for all tasks that cannot be handled algorithmically. Typical cases are parameter changes, software updates, or the hardest of all, deciding on the growth rate of token issuance. How should we decide about such tasks? Should we elect a committee to execute the task? And if yes, what is the sensible election rule for proof of stake blockchains? Should election rights be proportional in such cases to the share of tokens? Or should token holders simply vote on such tasks? But then what is a good voting mechanism? Again, a difficult issue is what is the best collective decision rule to decide on the growth rate of the amount of tokens in the system if this is not done algorithmically? There, we just published a paper just testing that flexible majority rules might be appropriate for deciding on the growth rate of tokens. With flexible majority rules, you need a larger majority to support a larger growth rate. Hence, the higher the growth rate, the more difficult it becomes to obtain the support of the token holders. With such flexible majority rules, token holders can protect themselves from diluting the value of the tokens and make a block proof of uh, state blockchain sustainable in the long run. Yet for other tasks, we need different voting rules and we are actively working on them. For instance, assessment voting promises to be a useful tool for proof of state blockchains to solve the participation problem in voting. That means ensuring that enough token holders participate in voting. It works as follows. Suppose, token holders should decide on a software upgrade or a zero one decision. Then one can randomly select a group of token holders who decide on this first issue and the result will then be published. Then you open the vote to everybody. If designed properly, we can expect a high participation among the assessment group since this is a small group and everybody knows that the participation will be important. And thus, we obtain a representative result from the first round of voting. If nobody votes in the second round, or the result is simply confirmed, we obtain good collective decisions for the blockchain. 
Hence, that's really interesting. And it takes me to my next question, which is, is it possible to decentralize everything? And by that, I mean, can we handle everything decentralized, either if a task is solved algorithmically or by voting of the token holders? And therefore, can we not dispense with any central authority? This is certainly the dream of many people involved in blockchains. From a scientific perspective, we design steps towards this dream and towards decentralization with both approaches, algorithmically and through voting. Yet at this stage, there is a set of tasks left that cannot be fully decentralized. Again, with sufficient scientific research, we will see how close we can come to the dream of full decentralization. So with that in mind, Hans, can you tell me how is this going to be implemented in Concordium? Well, we offer insights um, from scientific research, design uh, staking models or election rules, voting methods, governance, uh, or also decentralized financing, finance concepts. And then it's, it's up, of course, then to the management and scientific teams at Concordium to see whether this makes sense, whether they want to implement uh, it or not. And, and up the, it's up to them to decide, of course. Uh, what to take and what to implement in Concordium. That was great. Thank you so much, Hans. It was really good just to have a little bit more in-depth knowledge about why science matters, especially when it comes to governance. It was also a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today at CCD. I hope you liked the programme. Remember, if you want to find out more about Concordium's research and technology, log on to concordium.com. Remember to like and subscribe and let us know what you think of this new format. We really do love to get your comments. I'm Claire Ross Brown and I'll see you really soon.